I will be the first to say that um, I am not an expert in digital quality measures. Um, I am a very strong advocate for quality outcomes and for the progressive evolution of our industry to be vibrant and change receptive and innovative and performance oriented. And so my remarks may be a bit different than any of the others that you've heard because I'm not just going to talk about the future of quality. I want to talk about the future of healthcare and how that is relevant to the quality agenda. And then I, I definitely do have some perspectives on digital as it relates to quality, because I know that that is the, the focus of the conference, and I'm going to certainly end there. Um, but before I, um, before I jump right in, uh, I thought I would start by putting my perspective into a context. Um, I'm now in Minnesota. Um, for those who are from Minnesota, you may have remembered that um, you know, back in the day, there was this notion of the Minnesota miracle. The Minnesota miracle was that if you wanted to live a quality life, if you wanted to live a long life, if you wanted to, to, to have value-based healthcare, that Minnesota was the place to be. Um, folks may not realize that um, the very first Blue Cross plan in the nation uh, was in Minnesota. So Minnesota was the very first blue plan. I don't think that I have the right slide, but uh, there was an ad originally, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota was created actually by the hospitals in the state because their community members couldn't afford to be hospitalized. So the hospitals grouped together to create an insurance function uh, and they put a blue cross in the very first ad and that's actually where the name Blue Cross came from. So this all started in Minnesota. Um, so that's the past, but, but more importantly, I wanted to show you the future. Um, so this is our recent ad with Blue Cross Blue Shield in Minnesota. And what I mostly wanted to point out is it doesn't look a whole lot different, does it? Fishing is still the theme. Um, there's, it, it's all about the community, it's all about the Minnesota miracle, it's all about health in nature. Um, and the reason why I wanted to convey this point, and it's one of the first things that I stress, stress with my team when I got to Blue Cross Blue Shield in Minnesota is, when I see our ads, it talks about us being big and old. And for us to prevail and advance and win, it can't just be about being, being big and old. We need to be better. We need to be different. We need to reinvent our industry. Um, one, of the, one of the first questions that I got uh, by the press when I came to Minnesota is, well, aren't you afraid United Healthcare is right in your backyard? Uh, there were change in laws in Minnesota, so now a lot of the other health plans could compete. Aren't you afraid of Aetna and Anthem and Cigna and United? And my answer was, no, I'm actually not afraid of any of those organizations because they're just like us. They're incumbents that don't see that we actually need to reinvent ourselves from the inside out. Otherwise, other organizations will reinvent us from the outside in. I'm not worried about United. I'm worried about Amazon, Target, Walmart, Google, organizations that look at healthcare and say quality could even be better. We're certainly not so great in the service dimension, and healthcare is increasingly unaffordable. Um, in Minnesota, the cost of health care this year was 9.5% higher than the total cost of care last year. That's triple the national average. The total cost of care in Minnesota, I shared it with Peggy just a few minutes ago, is set to double within the next seven years unless we actually intervene in some way. So we're at the precipice of an unsustainable model. Uh, and what I worry about being an incumbent in healthcare is, is that we're facing the likelihood of potential extinction as we know it, 
unless we change. And what's fascinating is we are at a, a pivotal moment where we can change. I'm, um, as you'll see in my presentation, I have very few, if any, words. They're all images. Uh, so you'll get, you'll get the sense that you don't, won't have to read anything in this presentation except for perhaps this slide. So I don't know how many of you remember um, from 1996 this Business Week cover that talked about the fall of an American icon. Kind of feels like the challenges that healthcare is under duress. Does anyone remember which company this was in 1996? Apple. So the point that I would like to convey in the rest of my talk is all about what I would say are I want statements. Statements about what I want as a health plan CEO, as a doctor, as a patient, as a caregiver, from the healthcare industry, from quality in healthcare. And I would even argue that 10 years from now, my prediction is we're going to be measuring quality completely differently than we measure quality today. And so I want to expand our thinking. From my point of view, the reason why a platform, whether it's digital, which is essential, but anything else we think about is quality measurement for us means to be nimble. Because if we're going to be a higher performing industry, we need to think about what and how we would measure that relates to performance of our industry that goes beyond singularly or a subset of how we think about the quality world today. So let me dive into my I want statements. My first I want statement is I want us to move from the notion of clinical quality to health quality. And this is going to be highly synonymous with a lot of the thinking that we're now putting in with the reflection and stats that you already know that only 20% of health is what happens in the traditional clinical arena. 80% of it relates to socioeconomic factors or physical environment or genetics or health behaviors. But only 20% it really is is described as influenced by health plans, hospitals, doctors, or the traditional care delivery environment, or the, the body on the left, the 20% at the feet, is what we've predominantly focused on influencing, and frankly, how we've thought mostly about measuring quality. The reality is that more progressive organizations are realizing that just purely trying to influence the 20% is not going to get our healthcare industry to a better place. Just hitting on the 20% doesn't fulfill the promise of what we say, which is investing in an ounce of prevention addresses a pound of cure. Our 20% focus isn't doing that. So one of the first things that I want is I want us to think about this notion of whole health with the evolution of our focus from purely the things that are either process oriented or purely clinical quality oriented to the types of measures that think more broadly about what we can do as health plans or health systems or employers or vendors or anyone else that can influence true improvement of health. Um, I am one, I'm in a bit of a battle these days with hospitals in Minnesota uh, because my point of view is reinvention will require health plans to be different, hospitals to be different, and doctors to be different. Um, and from my point of view, hospitals should be ERs, ORs, and ICUs. So in a world where we take such good care of patients upstream, then a lot of the things that we think about measuring downstream become less critical to the things that we're measuring upstream. So that's why this notion of whole health is the first thing that I would want as we think about evolution of quality for the future.
The second thing that I want is I want to think through a health transformation lens. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota is working on our strategic plan. And our presumption is that one of the things that our consumers want is to be healthy. And they want us to do what we can to keep them healthy, not just take care of them when they're sick. And the reason why I think that we're in a battle to some degree with some of the hospitals in Minnesota is we in the health plan world live in what I would describe a world of a profitability of wellness. We do better when people don't get sick. And many of the other stakeholders live in the world of profitability of sickness. So one of the things that I want to do a better job of measuring is how well, how transformative are we toward wellness? Um, I have a friend um, who uh, is a practicing internist. And she talked about the fact that most of the patients that she saw in her practice are what she dubbed as Hondas, hypertensive, obese, non-compliant, diabetic adults. <laughs> and so with some imagery, I conveyed our Honda or David of today. <laughs> so when we think about measuring our outcomes, how effectively are we thinking of creating the David of tomorrow, the Teslas? the tech-enabled, exercise, self-motivated, living better, and active Davids? And do we do a very effective job of measuring what I think one of, one of the top priorities that our customers should want when they shop for quality is how effective will my health plan or my doctor or my hospital be in turning me from a Honda to a Tesla? I guess I'd turn to our friends at NCQA, how many of our measures will tell us that what we measure and the behavior change on the delivery system side or the health plan side that deliver on those measures, how effectively does it do this? Because this is the outcome we should try to seek and the type of measure that we should be going after. So, so one of the things that my, my next I want statement, and all the rest of the whole presentation is just I want statements, so be prepared. Um, I have always been equally passionate about service as I have been about quality. And it troubles me because if you were to ask consumers to define quality, many of them will measure quality through a service lens. And so I don't know if we do a very good job. My guess is that when you think of the numerator of value, it has to be equivalently focused on the experiential side of quality, not just the clinical side of quality. Um, I remember it was my very first job at Harvard Community Health Plan. I was a medical director at the Kenmore Center. Uh, and I was responsible for fielding every single patient complaint. And there was never, ever, a complaint about clinical quality in my tenure. It was always about service quality. And so very early in my career, I dubbed the expression that I thought healthcare was the only service business that didn't act like one. And the results will play that out. Um, net promoter score, I assume folks know what that is. You probably, many of you measure it. The way that I boil down Net Promoter Score is it's all the customers who love you subtracted by all the customers that hate you. <laughs> so your best can be plus 100. Your worst can be minus 100. The health insurance industry on average is 12. Primary care on average is three. I'm happy to share Minnesota's results. We are proudly the leader in Minnesota in NPS scores of any health plan in Minnesota at a whopping 11. Costco, any guesses? 79. 
don't know what Amazon is, probably higher. But we can't unilaterally think of quality through just a clinical quality lens without also thinking of it from a service quality lens, because in many respects, that's how many of our consumers judge us. You guys doing okay out there? All right. I want appropriateness. More is not always better. I actually stole this. This is a Choosing Wisely ad that was published in Canada. Um, we have some Choosing Wisely oriented measures that we measure, but maybe we should be measuring them all. There is a whole array of inappropriateness that actually not just drives up cost, but is unsafe. So with safety being one of our quality objectives, appropriateness is highly aligned here. And I would say I kind of want to know if I'm a consumer of healthcare, um, are my physicians, my hospitals, my health plans recommending the things that really advance my health? Are they doing more for me that actually could have negative consequences or too little for me? So I want a really good measure of appropriateness or a really good set of measures for appropriateness because I would be comfortable and would trust the system that really does right by me as a consumer. Knowing that some incentives may put me at risk for having things done more and some incentives would have me put at risk for doing less. And if we're going to, one of the things that we're seeking to advance in Minnesota is a much more aggressive move to capitation and risk-based arrangements, we'll need some assurances for consumers about appropriateness as we make that shift so that folks can trust we're doing right by them. Familiar type slide. I, there were so many to choose from as I picked one from the Dartmouth Atlas. It really didn't matter. I want consistency. Consistency from doctor to doctor and consistency from moment to moment. I want to know that when I go to system X, I'm going to get equally high quality care from Dr. A as I get from Dr. B or at least I want to be able to know the difference. But how well do we do a good job of measuring consistency? Um, think of it through a Six Sigma lens from a quality standpoint. I need to rehash this. Uh, the NCQA board and team would be horrified if I did it. But at one point, there were some stats that said if other industries had the quality performance of the healthcare industry. Um, what would the defects look like? And it was like a plane crashes at O'Hare every day. Uh, a thousand babies per day would be sent home with the wrong parent from hospitals. It's just kind of crazy stuff. So I want consistency and how well do we measure consistency? Oh, by the way, before I forget thinking of um, comparing to other industries. And back to the consumer, the service oriented. If you haven't seen a YouTube video, which is if travel worked like healthcare, watch it. Um, it will be humorous and really scary to really underscore the point of how we're perceived as a quality industry or not. I want consistency. So this is Sao Paulo, Brazil. This is a stark photo to describe health disparities or social disparities. I want healthcare to be equitable. How well do we assure that disadvantaged populations have equally high quality service affordability as other populations? So as I think about measuring success, frankly, one of our corporate objectives in Minnesota is to stamp out health inequities. So we're now talking about, well, how do we measure that? How do we know 
we've gotten to the place where we've really addressed social determinants of health and we really have addressed health inequities with the thought being that, all right, I know we're trying to improve the quality. It's, it's like, do you take things that are a nine and make them a 10 or do you take things that are a one and two and try to make them a five as you improve quality? To underscore the point that if we advanced and eliminated the racial, gender, sexual orientation, disability um, barriers to equal health for everyone we serve, uh, healthcare quality on average would rise inordinately. So how effectively are we measuring this issue of equitable health as another important trajectory for improvement of our industry that we must measure? I want healthcare to be affordable. Um, we measure some measures of affordability, efficiency, readmissions, emergency room utilization. The question is, is that enough? The answer is absolutely not. Uh, I shared the stats about healthcare costs in Minnesota. Um, I don't worry about United and Cigna and Anthem and Aetna. I worry about Medicare for all, I do. Uh, because if costs continue to rise like this in our state, we have no choice um, but to rein in costs uh, through a government-sponsored program, or that is absolutely an open door for disruptive innovators to come in and say the healthcare incumbents just don't know what they're doing, they can't deliver a quality and affordable product. Um, so I want affordability, and I have a hard time measuring clinical quality without also measuring cost. Uh, are we willing to deliver quality, specifically clinical quality, without all the other measures of quality at any cost? I would imagine no, especially if quality, as we're currently defining it, is incomplete in the eyes of the people who shop for healthcare. So I think this has to go hand in hand with all the other things that we've talked about. I'm gonna skip over that one. I want quality to be transparent. My team manipulated the Amazon website. Let me call it out. We said, what if Amazon said your price will be disclosed after you purchase. And you also may not be able to read the bullet underneath. Information about this product will be sent to you upon completion of this purchase. So can you imagine if Amazon said, buy stuff, you don't quite know the difference between the products or the price, but you go for it. And then we'll charge you after the fact. I want whatever we come up with to really be an accurate reflection of distinction in value in our system, quality and service and cost, because I don't want this to just be transparent. I want quality to be shoppable. Or is there anyone from the Minnesota systems in the audience? All right, I apologize. This is also a manipulated website. What if we could, in great detail, show our customers the distinct quality and cost performance by procedure, including detailed stats about all the relevant metrics of performance, plus the true out-of-pocket costs if you went to Mayo versus Health Partners versus Alina versus North versus Fairview? If I were Amazon, this is exactly what I would do. I would create you know, Dana Safran was here, right? She's in charge of measurement for Haven. For goodness sake, what do you think she's up to? Exactly this. Let's measure stuff so that people can have an Amazon-like shopping experience in healthcare. Are we ready for that? Because I think it's coming, and I frankly, I think it's overdue. I think it's necessary. 
it's, it's not just hospitals. It's hospitals, it's doctors, it's health plans, it's vendors. We shouldn't just be shopping without blindly understanding the cost of what we're purchasing and the results of what we'll get. So I want healthcare to be shoppable. And I want healthcare to be referable. I, um, I think I was at Anthem at the time, and I had just moved to Phoenix, and I was looking for a doctor, so I went to, I think it was Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona's website to choose a doctor, and there were like a thousand to choose from, and there was no way that I could easily tell which doctor was the best doctor to choose, so I want to know. I want you to tell me. Employers want us, the health plan, to tell their employees, where should I go to get the highest quality, most affordable care, either hospitals or doctors? So how effectively do we present scorecards that are accurate and reflect service and clinical quality and cost or efficiency or total cost of care or whatever metrics we choose that quality should be used for the purposes of shopping, just as we use it in other parts of our lives, and we should be thinking about quality through that lens. Um, I think I only have two more I want statements. I want healthcare to be convenient. Um, we just announced a partnership with North Memorial Health. Uh, North Memorial is a hospital in our city. We're not getting into the hospital business. Blue Cross is not getting in the hospital business. And North Memorial is not getting into the health plan business. What we're doing is we're co-creating what we think the future of care delivery should look like, which we don't think is what it looks like today. So one of the things where we have to be nimble is we're measuring the things that amount to care delivery as we know it, and how effectively are we thinking about the trajectory of where we think the industry is going to go. Um, we have a whole division that is looking at getting into the care delivery business beyond just north, the primary care business, and further upstream than that because we're thinking not like a health plan, it's all part of our reinvention strategy. We, we want to be, I mentioned Costco, we want to be the Costco of healthcare. Who says we can't? What would it take for us to be the Costco of healthcare? In this regard, the way that I describe it is we want to be the Netflix of healthcare. Who says that health plans need to stay in the distribution business? Maybe we should get into the content business, just like Netflix did. Netflix was dependent upon content developed by others that they distributed. Health plans are distributors. What if this wasn't just your average living room? What if you actually could access digital services through the screen on your TV that your health plan or your care organization went shopping with you to the grocery store, or frankly even had an aisle in the grocery store that only sold healthy options at a far significant discount over unhealthy foods. Or the brochure on the couch is ShareCare. We just announced a partnership. What if we really got into the business of rewarding people to activate their own health? Or the Alexa button on the desk? What if you could actually triage most of your clinical scenarios and conditions through an activated, personalized concierge? And the Livio van is our mobile care business. What if care went to the patient as opposed to the patients going to care? What if the very nature of what healthcare looked like is different? We need to be prepared for the evolution of our industry to look somewhat different than it looks today. And some would say, oh, that's far out into the future. I don't think so. I think it's closer than many of us would care to believe. So finally, um, I want to talk about 
digital. And I'm a bit baffled. I know that everyone's scared about digital, and some folks may say, well, let's see if I would make more money if I do things digitally versus manually or what have you. I, I'm baffled by that because this is the exact reason why I worry about incumbents. Incumbents are those organizations that tell us the world will never change. Um, when we started talking to our board of directors about getting into the care delivery business, they said, good luck with that because you're never gonna be able to disrupt, bless you, the traditional clinical model. People are addicted to the way healthcare works today, going to their own doctor. And I said, okay, I have to point out that when I was growing up, my parents told me, never meet someone online, <laughs> never get into a stranger's car, and never stay overnight at someone's home that you don't know. <laughs> you get my point. So we could stay in our world of manual, backward, things will never change, old school healthcare point of view, and we may suffer the news, taxi cab, video, book, and record phenomenon because we love so much our chart chase and our ability to measure quality through manual means. Um, so I want to end where I started, um, which is this notion that we need to move from the world that we predominantly focus on in the 20% clinical, preventive, procedural perhaps. I know the list is longer, but that's all I could fit at the 20 level to health transformative, consumer engaged, appropriate, consistent, equitable, affordable, transparent, shoppable, referable, convenient, and digital. I think that's all that I wanted to cover. I probably have a little extra time and I don't know if I can take questions, but I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. I know you'd prefer to drink, but I'm happy to take questions <laughs> before you do that. Hi there, love Hi. your talk. My name is Connie Villalba, I work for Elsevier. So your second to last slide regarding incumbents really spoke to me because if ever there were an incumbent, we are that. You know, we're a publishing company. We, books and journals was where we got started. I wonder what recommendation you have for transforming when you come from a place like that, that is so entrenched, and you recognize you need to, but you have, or you lack the skill sets required to make that transformation. You know, I, um, I think the way that I've done it before, because it's hard for organizations you know, we're, we're doing a bunch of cultural work, work at Minnesota, and one of the things they talk about is when you're going through significant transformational change, as we are as an organization, whether it's internally and externally, you face the jaws of death, the cultural jaws of death, which I think is what several organizations go through. So my thought would be, and we, I think we've had lots of discussions about, at NCQA as well about the notion of innovation, and my experience has been the you need to create a safe unit that is allowed to ideate, that is allowed to innovate, that is allowed to create an alternative model that is fully resourced and fully protected and there isn't a sucking sound that's coming back to the traditional industry and can't be smothered or suppressed or stopped by the rest of the business. And in my experience, when you allow that to happen, the results become very clear and you begin to reach a tipping point. Not all the innovations work. Those groups are allowed to fail as well. In fact, they may fail numerous times, but I think most organizations don't leave the space for internal transformation. And that's what I would suggest. That's what we've done. Um, you know, frankly, I think when you begin to see pockets of innovation in the organization, there's a hunger 
by new groups that then step, step up, that don't want to live in the old world, that also want to move to the new world. And then you reach a point where the new world has certainly outnumbered the old, and then you've pivoted. Uh, it takes a while. It can't be done overnight, but that's how we've done it. Hopefully that helps. Thanks very much. Hi, it's Jerry Asheroff, EMIT Consulting. Amazing talk, thank you very much. Thank you. I think the things that you said you want, um, a lot of us want, and you've described some of the steps that you're taking in your organization to satisfy those wants. When you look out across the industry, do you have some recommendations of what some of the high leverage moves might be to sort of satisfy those wants on a very large scale basis? Um, I've been at this for a really long time now. Uh, I feel like um, I, went to, uh, I went to the World Congress and I was asked to speak yet again about value-based transformation. And I think I was having a rough day and I essentially said, every time I come here, it's this odd combination of, of hope because we're all there talking about it and frustration that I heard the same presentations this May as I heard 20 years ago. So my view was, can we please get on with it? We have to do something. And you know, I, I, I've said over the years that the money's gonna run out. There isn't gonna be any more money in healthcare. The money is gonna be what motivates a change. And nonetheless, even though that is the case, and even though there are organizations that have proven that under a value-based model, they transform quicker than under a volume-based model, we somehow don't see the pivot happening. I've been trying the evangelist approach over the years. That isn't enough. I think what's going to happen, and I think that this is the way that it's going to need to work, is there going to be more and more brave leaders that are willing to break some glass, which is exactly what we're doing in Minnesota. We're being pretty aggressive with systems in Minnesota, and you know the reality is that health insurance costs so much because health care costs so much. So we can't do it alone, and the systems don't want us to make rules. So we need to break glass, and what I mean by breaking glass is we have to say, okay, if this room has enough people in it to have four major health systems, um, we don't need you all to agree that we need to go on a different path. We just need them to agree. And if we can get them to agree, and we can so significantly improve the quality, the service, and the affordability of this system, and then really navigate all of these patients that go to these systems over here, then one of two things happen. All of these systems begin to lose revenue, lose business, lose membership for the sake of these institutions, or everyone else aligns. I think that's what's gonna need to happen. I don't have a lot of confidence that we're gonna see things from DC that will catalyze full-scale change. I really think one of two things will happen. We either will reinvent ourselves from the inside out through the brave leaders that are willing to step up, or someone will reinvent us from the outside in, and I would say that will be Medicare for All or the Havens, the Googles, the Apples, the Targets, the Walmarts. I mean, I think just pay attention. I, I think there are, the, there are those that are clearly not standing for convention that are beginning to pilot new things. Um, I think more than ever before, we will see innovators that measure quality differently for the sake of their consumers and start to make some bold, significant actions. We've certainly taken quite a few in the last year, and we've only just begun. I think there are going to be others like us. Great. Well, thank you all very much.